all of the world, except for the Jews, was pagan when Jesus walked the earth. You know, it really shouldn't elude our understanding that as Gentiles, those non-Jews coming to belief in Jesus at that time, the belief in him came hand in hand with instructions of how to turn from paganism and turn to the God of Israel. Jesus was, after all, the Messiah who had been promised to the Jewish people. And they'd been doing their best to draw close to God by following his instructions for a few thousand years. So if those facts should not elude our understanding, then why do they? Could it be that the enemy knew that the most effective way to slow down the return of the Messiah would be to separate this new group of believers from re any real understanding? You bet he did. And as always been the case, he used a handful of men to do the dirty job for him. And the one who had the most notable effect on the understanding of believers in the God of Israel continues to affect our thinking to this very day. His name was Constantine. And tonight we're going to take a look at him and a few other things. Okay, so many volumes were consulted in this research for sure. But the primary book that we'll be referencing tonight is The Constantine Conspiracy by the late Rabbi David Hargis from Good Lion Publications. As we go into our study tonight, we're going to be focused upon Emperor Constantine and the effect that he had upon the church. We'll first need to build a foundation, that's for sure. And the foundation that we build will then help us to see the drastic nature of change which took place within the church. And one of the first issues that we'll need to stop and take a look at is God's calendar. So our first job will be to come quickly and educate ourselves on the biblical way of viewing the calendar. In other words, the way that God wants us to view the moments of our lives. And we need to then compare that which we know to be far off from that which God wants us to view now. What we looked at in the past of how far we've come from and what God originally set up, we're going to want to compare those two for sure. Because they're like not really that close. So let's start with Yeshua, his Hebrew name, his view of God's instructions. Turn, if you will, to Matthew 5, where Jesus is quoted as saying in Matthew 5, 17, Do not think that I have come to abolish the law or the prophets. I've not come to abolish them, but to fulfill them. I tell you the truth, until heaven and earth disappear, not the smallest letter, not the least stroke of a pen, will by any means disappear from the law until everything is accomplished. Anyone who breaks one of the least of these commandments and teaches others to do the same will be called least in the kingdom of heaven. But whoever practices and teaches these commands will be called great in the kingdom of heaven. 